We're going to give a demonstration of how easily Ansible Tower can be used to install and configure software on Windows. Many people know that Ansible Tower can work very well with Linux, but frequently people don't realize that it can do just as well with Windows. So let's take a look at this playbook that we have in front of us. This first one is called Install IIS, and as the name implies, we're going to install the IIS web service on a Windows server. We see that there are three basic tasks to install the web server and then to turn on the web service once it's been installed and then to create a default uh, index page to go with the service. So let's go over to the Ansible Tower and we'll go into the template section where this is already installed as a template, install IIS on Windows and we will simply press the little rocket ship to begin. Now, you may have noticed that in creating the default web page, it used a variable. In fact, we'll call it up. We see this IIS test message that's going to be inserted within the HTML of the file. So we are asking, before we run it, what would you like to go in there? And let's take the default out and say, this is the message to print. We click the next button. We check to make sure everything looks fine, and then we launch. And now Tower is beginning to run the playbook. We see the status here of job is still running. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that you have the running status, you have a started time, an indication it's not finished, and so forth. And here on the right-hand side, we're actually watching as the individual tasks are executing. Right now, it is installing the IIS web server. That will take about 30 seconds. But as we see here on the left, we have more information, and all of this is updated in real time. And uh, it gives you all of this as logging detail as well. So after this has been completed, we'll be able to look back and see uh, what person did it because we have the user recorded, we have the start time, the finish time, we will have the uh, ending status. And now we see that the web service has been installed. Gold means that it had to make a change. So indeed it had to install the web service and it had to, had to turn the service on and then create the index file. So now let's go over to the subject machine, which we see prior to this had not been reachable because there was no web server. And now here's our message. Our site is alive. This is the message to print, which is what I told it to do. Now the question becomes, you know, what happens if you were to do this again? You know, because people think, oh, well, it's automation. If we someone does something and they do it twice, uh, all sorts of bad things are going to happen. Well, the difference between Ansible Tower and a lot of other uh, solutions is that it is item potent, which is to say that it's uh, it describes an end condition, and as such, it will not redo things that it doesn't need to do. And if we take a look at the actual playbook, the playbook says to install IES, well, that's already been done. Then turn on the service, well, that's already been done, and create the index file. Now, how about if we run it a second time, only this time uh, I'm going to change the website text. I'm just going to say second text in here. I push the next button. I say launch. Now, the fear might be that it's going to try to install a second web server and cause all sorts of problems, but in fact, no. Uh, as we see, it's already beginning to gather the facts about the target machine, and then it's going to go and it's going to take a look at what it needs to do. Install IES, well, it didn't actually need to install anything, so it came back with an OK instead of changed. And likewise, turn on the service. Well, the service is already on. And then the final thing is it had to create the index file. Well, I changed the content of the index file, and it said, hey, this is different. So instead of having this is the message to print, when I do this, I see second text, which is what I put in the second time around. Now let's go to 
the second playbook that we're doing, which is to deinstall. I will bring that up over here. And we see that there's basically two tasks. One first is to stop the existing uh, web server service and then to actually deinstall the package. So I will go and hit the little rocket ship again, but only this time on the deinstall template. And we will see the execution take place. And once again, uh, this is going to take you know about 45 seconds or so to execute. But we can watch as each of these tasks begin. It starts off by gathering facts, and then it should fall into stopping the IAS service. And we will see soon enough that, yes, it's gold. Therefore, it's been changed, as it says here. So it actually had to do something. And now it is beginning to deinstall the actual web server itself. And you can see on the, uh, on the left-hand side all this information, which, as I said, is all logged. It's logged permanently within Tower. So you can go back and, and see exactly who did what when, what the output was, uh, what the results were. So there's no doubts. This gives you tremendous audit capabilities. And we see now it has completed. And we see it's in gold. It had to change something. It had to deinstall and everything is looking good. So now when we go back over here and we try to refresh the page, instead of coming back, we see at the bottom of the screen here it says connecting. We see the swirl going on up here. The website's offline. In just a few seconds, we're going to get a message saying, oh, it's not responding. And this is exactly as we predicted. This is exactly what we expect to see happen. So there we go. And so we see that it's very simple to actually control Windows machines to install software, to configure software, and to make changes the same way with Ansible Tower that we could with Linux. Thank you.